Okay, in this video I want to do a, uh, another chain rule example. Um, and in this one, um, we're going to have to use both the power rule along with the chain rule. And then also the quotient rule because, hey, we've got a uh, fraction in there. So, again, almost any time I see something raised to a power other than 1, it just automatically makes me think chain rule. Okay, so the first thing I did was rewrite my square root as um, a 1 half exponent because, again, that way I can use the, it just reminds me to use the chain rule on it. Alright, so if I take the derivative, it says the 3 comes out front, we leave the inside part alone. and then we raise that to the second power but now by the chain rule it says okay we did the outside part but now we have to move on the inside and take the derivative of the inside part so we have to take the derivative of all the inside so to do that <coughs> we'll have to use the good old quotient rule so there's my big O fraction um, and remember the quotient rule says if you have f over g and we want the derivative of that it says you take the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared so we're going to use that rule again <clears throat> basically now we did the inside part so we're just looking at the fractional part when we take the derivative okay so the bottom is just x squared plus one to the one-half power Okay, then I have to multiply that by the derivative of the numerator, which would just be 1 plus 0, so we'll just put our times 1 there, minus the top, which is x plus 4, and then the derivative of the bottom, we'll actually have to use the chain rule on that. So the 1 half will come out front, we'll leave the inside alone, and we'll take 1 away to get to the negative 1 half, and now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside of that, so we'll pick up another 2x factor. And it says we get all of that over the bottom squared. And the denominator was a square root, um, so if we raise the 1 half, if we square it, we'll just get x squared plus 1 to the first power. <clears throat> so now it's just a matter of kind of cleaning this up a little bit. So. I'll write the first one as 3 times x plus 4 squared, so I'm squaring the top. If you square the bottom, we'll just be left with x squared plus 1 to the first power. Okay, I'm not going to multiply that stuff out. And then what I'm going to do on the next part is try to factor out some stuff. So this is going to be a useful little trick for those of you that are going to soon be seeing um, increasing, figuring out where a function is increasing and decreasing. Um, because a lot of times you're going to have some complicated derivative and then you'll have to simplify it down. So, okay, in the numerator I'm going to factor out any common uh, terms, any common factors. So there's an x squared plus 1, I see an x squared plus 1, and <coughs> remember if it was like x squared plus x to the fifth, what we would factor out would be an x squared term, and then we would have 1 plus x cubed left over. So we factor out the smaller of the two numbers, we're going to do that exact same trick here. So I have an x squared plus 1 to the positive 1 half, an x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half. I'm going to factor out the x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half. Okay, and now I have to figure out everything that goes back inside of the parentheses, or the brackets rather. So I've pulled out an x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half, but I want x squared plus 1 to the positive 1 half, so I know I'm going to have to multiply it by some power of x squared plus 1. But remember, if we have like bases, we add the exponents. So if I add 2 over 2, well, negative 1 half plus 2 over 2 will give me positive 1 half, but 2 over 2 is just the first power. Okay. Notice we could have also canceled out the 1 half and the 2, it looks like what we're left over with is the negative and the x and the x plus 4 term because again we factored out the correct power on the x squared plus 1 term so let me bring my bracket a little closer so it doesn't look so bad um, and then we still have our x squared plus 1 in the denominator and now we could move this negative exponent down because we have all multiplication in the numerator 
So if I make this one big fraction, I'll have 3 times x plus 4 squared. Again, I'm going to pull this part down. Inside the parentheses, or the brackets again, notice um, I'll have x squared minus x squared, so that I'll cancel out. I'll be left with a positive 1. It looks like minus 4x in the numerator. If I bring the x to the negative 1 half down to the denominator, I'm going to get my original x squared plus 1. Now I'm going to have an extra x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. And now I'm going to have the original x squared plus 1 that was over here. So if you add the exponents, this is 2 over 2, 2 over 2, and a half, we'll get x squared plus 1 to the 5 halves. And if we wanted to, we could even rewrite that again as a root. We could rewrite that as the square root of x squared plus 1 raised to the fifth power. And that would be our final answer. All right, so I hope this example makes some sense. Again, the chain rule can be pretty tricky. So, um, you know, again, there's kind of one calculus step, and unfortunately, usually it turns into about, you know, at least three or four, or, you know, a few algebra steps um, after that. So I don't know what I just said. So there's usually one calculus step and a bunch of algebra that happens. So that's, that's usually the tedious part. So I hope this makes some sense. If you have any questions, send me an email um, via the good old YouTube, and I'll try to help you out. All right, good luck out there.